Assalamu alaikum. Can you tell us about yourself and your life before your conversion? Yes, of course. Um, my life before conversion, uh, you can separate in two periods because my life was half in Uruguay and the other half in Spain. So uh, in my childhood, I was raised up in Uruguay with a nice family and where the background was um, German and uh, Italian from my father's side and my mother's side. So my education was German education and education in my family had uh, a very important place. So I was raised up with the, uh, so much study and activities and uh, sport and books and many things. Alhamdulillah, uh, nothing was missing. And um, my, my family was uh, supportive and this is the, the main thing. Uh, regarding um, spiritual uh, and religious background, I didn't have uh, any religious background. Actually, my grandmother was um, Catholic, and yes, in the school we had some studies of um, Catholicism, but since it wasn't making so much sense for me, I was not attached to this, and normally also the religion, the Catholic religion, um, it's some, something very light at his, as it was um, taught for us in the school or in our area. So it wasn't uh, important in my life. Actually, not, not, it wasn't important, but it wasn't making sense. So for me, it didn't affect my, my background, yeah. So how was your first encounter with Islam? I can recognize two encounters uh, with Islam, but Actually, at that time, I didn't know it was something related to Islam. For example, the first encounter, I was 19 years old. I was traveling to Argentina and I was in a workshop and I hear to one song, which I actually after that I, I understood, I knew that it was not a song, it was a dhikr. But at that time, for me, it sounded like a song. And I hear some phrases that make me feel some things in my body. These phrases, after I investigated, it was Alhamdulillah, Allah, and words I didn't know because at that time I, I didn't know Arabic, I didn't know anything. So this uh, encounter with Islam, which was through a dhikr, it was like a seed in my life because after that I started to investigate what was these words, these races. So this is a first seed and after that um, I investigated about these words, where do they came from, what does it mean, what does Allah mean, what does Alhamdulillah mean, what does Bismillah mean, everything without knowing anything. Um, and the second, second encounter, um, it was when I traveled to Spain. The first time, uh, it was the first time that I saw a woman with the hijab. Because uh, as I mentioned, I was living in Uruguay. Imagine this was like more than 23 years ago. So uh, we didn't have uh, information about Islam. We didn't have anything. We didn't have Islamophobia also in, in our country. So we were like uh, babies for, for uh, open-minded uh, regarding Islam. So when I first saw a woman with hijab, it was something very strange for me. I, I was 22 years old. I still remember that time uh, and that conversation with the woman. But the main point is that when I saw that woman, I was uh, amazed by her uh, beauty. I still, uh, when I remember this, <laughs> it makes me cry. And subhanAllah, um, I felt her beauty and I understood many things without knowing anything. 
because I don't know anything about Islam. I don't know anything. I don't have a bad image. I don't have good image. Nothing. I saw her and I understood why this woman, uh, she is covering, why she is choosing this and not that. There might be something in her religion that is so power, powerful that make her wear dress like that. That was a seed for me. After that, the travel continued and I went back to my country. But this was uh, a first encounter also with Islam. How did your interest in Islam start? It is a little difficult to make a moment that uh, Islam uh, started to, to be attracting, attracting for me, since uh, it was very gradually. Actually, um, always I was asking to myself these questions, like uh, existential questions. Where do we come from? Where are we going? Why are we here? Is there a God? And all these questions I was asking to myself much before uh, then I started to be interested in Islam, because this is the fitra, this is normal for us to ask uh, ourselves. So my uh, interest was very gad gradually. Uh, but I remember that there was a period, an important period, when I was working uh, in Spain with refugees and women from Maghreb and Sahara. Uh, and I was uh, very close to them. They were inviting me to gatherings and eating. I was observing them. And at that period, I began to realize that what do the social media was saying it wasn't true. Uh, they were talking about Muslim women, they were talking about oppressed women, uh, and I wasn't seeing these uh, oppressed women. Actually, I was starting to see us as oppressed women, and them as um, happy and free, and they were having a nice life. Of course, the difficulties and problems are everywhere, but uh, it was very interesting for me to to see the contrast that actually I was more slave to the fashion or to the creation of Allah and they were more having a life that uh, they were submitted to the Creator so for me uh, the interest began through seeing their way of they, they, their way of life uh, it wasn't like uh, I want to investigate about Islam and I started. No, I was. Islam came to me in a way of everyday life. So this was the, the first period I started to ask to myself. Mm, there is something uh, here for me to explore. What is this religion? What is this culture? What was the breaking point that made you consider being a Muslim? There were a lot of breaking points that led me to Islam. But when I started to investigate little, uh, after these uh, people I knew and I was uh, more near about uh, near to Islam, I started to ask to myself, okay, maybe this is uh, an interesting uh, way of life, religion to accept. But uh, I had many fears, for example, why if I can't uh, pray uh, six, uh, five times a day? Uh, what about if I can't fast? Uh, can I be able to leave some behaviors apart? Can I change my, my, the way I dress and I, can I dress modestly? I mean, I was having many questions because I thought if I will accept this uh, religion, this way of life, I have to accept it completely. So if not, for what? What's the benefit? So I took myself, like a, I made myself a test, uh, and I um, decided to fast one month in Ramadan without uh, being Muslim. So I uh, started to fast, and very, very, um, fast I was uh, experiencing the benefits of the fasting and the fasting led me to understand that I needed to feel strength from something else because I was feeling um, maybe tired 
or hungry. So I understood, okay, I need to pray. I need to pray to be, came, to be more uh, confident, to have connection with the, the Creator. So many things came without I, um, I, I pushed myself. It was like, um, how we say, organic. Uh, so slowly, slowly, these uh, breaking points were um, pushing me, my soul inside. But of course, I was very perfectionist. And I thought to myself, this uh, thing, I am not perfect to embrace Islam. And I bring this topic because uh, I know many people don't want, are scared to accept Islam because they feel they are weak, they don't know many things. So I thought this same. I am not good enough to accept Islam. So um, that point, I was very, it was very difficult for me because almost I was completely sure. And actually, I was watching so many testimonials from people which I respected. And I understood, yeah, this is, uh, there is something here. So I, I talked to one uh, chat, Islamic chat, and uh, there was Aya that was very, a breaking point for me. This is very important. It was uh, the ayah from Surat al-Baqarah that says, um, Allah doesn't burden any soul with more than he can bear. So this um, knowledge came to me like something like fresh my, my, refresh my soul because I understood that I wasn't, uh, I didn't have to be perfect that I could accept Islam and after that I would become better. So uh, this aliyah took me to, to make the, the shahada when I understood that uh, Allah accept me for what I can do. For example, uh, because mashallah Islam is so logical and has a lot of common sense. For example, if you can't pray because you are ill I mean, you can't pray, stand up. You can pray, sit down. And you can pray, lay down. So you can do your best. So I understood this. So I understood, okay, I can embrace Islam. Uh, and I don't need to be perfect. I will improve with the time. So this was uh, very important for me. At what age did you convert? What were the reactions of your family and friends about your conversion? I converted Islam more or less I was 32 years and the reaction of my family it was like this is something fashion like will pass you know so um, they accepted they I didn't have a resistance from my family I didn't have any problem in my family they thought this is something that came and will go and I knew that this wasn't going to be something that come and will go. So I, I left them to think, uh, okay, <laughs> and we didn't have any issue. In the beginning, of course, I was, uh, you know, making dawa so much, but I understood that I have to make dawa with the people that ask me and I don't need to pressure on the people. So it was very, nice, very simple. I didn't have any, alhamdulillah, I didn't face any problem, any difficulties. But I know there are a lot of women, they face difficulties, but not in my case. My family was supportive. How did you get information about Islam before your conversion? Uh, normally, I found um, information in the internet, YouTube, and some Islamic centers. But we were, uh, me, I was praying alone. I was searching uh, by myself. Uh, I was, I remember I was praying with the YouTube channel and praying and making the Surat Al-Fatiha, trying to memorize everything I was uh, doing alone because uh, I converted to Islam in Uruguay. And uh, there is very, very few people, Muslim, and at that time, I didn't have many information, so in YouTube and uh, internet. 
and small Islamic center. Were there things that you were missing in your life before converting? What were you looking for? Um, yes, what I was looking for before embracing Islam, I think is what all of us are looking for, which is peace in our heart. Yeah? We all want to have peace in our heart, not to mention we want to be, uh, to be happy. No, we want to have peace in our life. This is the, was the main thing I was searching. But the, the most also important thing I was searching is to, to have a balanced life, to have coherence in my life, like my thoughts and my actions and my emotions to be one, to be on the same path. And I felt before Islam, it wasn't like that. I, was uh, thinking one thing, doing one other thing, feeling other thing. So I was searching unity and coherence and balance in my life. How would you describe your life before and after Islam? Even though I wasn't a superficial person, since I mentioned I was asking myself many questions, uh, even though that I was feeling uh, emptiness. I was feeling some void in my heart and as you know, as human beings, always we want to fill this void. And of course, we fill this void with material things and of course this is never enough, never. So I was feeling um, this is something that's not normal. We, I want to fill this void and I don't find peace. So, um, you know, normally in, in the life um, before Islam, I felt this is no man's land because everyone has their own rules. Uh, you have to deal with the emotions and values for a lot of people and all of us are very different. We don't have uh, guidance. So it was like something like chaotic for me and of course I was feeling some fear and anxiety and even though as I said I was not superficial, I was always searching for answers, I was always studying, but my feeling was uh, I felt this void. Uh, after Islam there are some, some words like patience, sabr uh, or tawakkul or the Qadr of Allah, or many things that we learn in Islam, they give you a, a whole perspective of life. And this void I was feeling just disappear. Disappear because now I wasn't submitting to the creation of Allah, but I was submitting myself to the Creator and what He expected from me. So this void was slowly um, being uh, banished in my life. Which aspect of Islam affected you the most? Yes, the aspect of Islam that affect me the most are, are many of them, because Islam uh, is not a simple religion. Uh, it's not uh, a religion that you just believe and live, no, uh, that's why it's so much um, intense and attracting for me. So the, the things that uh, claim more ma the attention for me is that in Islam, all of us, we have rights and obligations. Uh, Islam talk about every issue in the life of a human being. Islam covers all the human experience you have guidance uh, to deal your kids, to deal your husband, for the families, for the job, for the neighbors. Everything is uh, contemplated. And uh, Islam is very, very logical for the people that is eclectical and likes the academia and likes to study and likes to understand things. Islam touch every, every topic. So everything is contemplated, everything is very logical, and a lot of sense, uh, common sense you can find in Islam, uh, not uh, only the logical part, but also the common sense. Always 
you can um, understand and contemplate many, many aspects of one issue. And it's, as I said, it's not a religion that just believe and continue. So this is uh, are the, the most important thing. And to finish this question, the other thing I want to mention, this is very, very important, is since I am a woman, uh, the most uh, attracting thing for me, it was the status of a woman is in Islam. So uh, because before, of course, I was searching also for for that. I was searching to um, to have a family, to have a respectful husband, to have a clean environment. And I found that Islam was giving the mother, the wife, uh, a very uh, high position and very <laughs> opposite than the social media and the media shows. It's very opposite. Uh, so this was for me um, very, this is my favorite part, the, the status of the woman in Islam. Are there any problems that you face as a revert? Yeah, sometimes um, sometimes difficult to answer this question because I feel so much benefits from Islam. Okay, so to think uh, about the problems make me feel like uh, you are not appreciating all the benefits. I can mention here yeah, some things. Of course, Islam gave me thousands of blessings and br brought in my life a lot of blessings. But I can mention this because it's important, because it's what we, as Muslim women, we, we face sometimes. Uh, I will not mention all the, the yeah, typical, sometimes Islamophobic um, yeah, um, behaviors sometimes from the people. Yeah, I, I experience some of them, not much, but some. But the main uh, thing that I can see is that many times, uh, I will talk by myself, for myself, um, as a Muslim woman, I always, it always happens that I have to show my abilities or capacities because the people normally look at you and will um, see your image and sometimes they can't see farther, you know, because we have, we wear hijab, we dress like that. Normally the people can think, Oh, she's ignorant, or she doesn't know this, or who is she? So sometimes I have to like get, make a lot of effort to show I do this, I work this, I studied this, I know this, 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 for the people not to stay with my image, to see farther. So this is different from the people that they just, they are like that and they express and they do their work, their job. So this is a little difficulty, but always I take this as a test and I don't uh, take it as a, a big uh, issue. But yeah, it was important to mention this, this point. What advice would you give to new rewards and people who are searching in their life to find their way? The advice I would give is the advice I, I would have uh, liked to hear. In some way, I, I hear this advice, but not in, the, in that way. Um, the more, most important thing for me is that you don't need to be perfect to embrace Islam. You don't need to be someone else to embrace Islam. You just have to make this step and make the best. And after that, Allah will open for you all the way and all the, the path. So uh, normally we think uh, opposite. We want to arrive this point to go to the other side, but sometimes we don't understand that uh, in Islam is different, Dif uh, it's opposite. For example, if you are mm, dealing with, for example, an illness, or addiction, or, or many things happening in your life, maybe you are thinking, ah, I have to clean myself to enter Islam, I have to be better to enter Islam, I have to be perfect to enter Islam. But 
It's not like that. It is rather opposite. Enter Islam and after Allah will open uh, all the blessings and for you it will be much easier to, for example, overcome your anxiety, overcome your addiction, overcome your uh, depression or anything that is happening to you will be easier when you have by your side the Creator.